Okay, good afternoon. Uh, so, the topic today is um, SDK based user space NEVME um, over TCP transportation solution. It's basically um, based on that you know the fabric agreement very well. So this is the agenda today and uh, this is basically introduced as PDK and if me of development history and status and basically we will talk about SDK, TCP transport introduction and then conclusion. And before uh, we start, uh, the SPDK NV of target timeline. Before that, we will talk about why we have the any fabric agreement. Well, previously um, in the machine, we will use SCSI agreement to compile or drive SSD. The at least that's the case for the upper layer, and. If we are exposing this fast device to the internet, if we're using the Astashi protocol, then PCIe SSD emerge, and then we have this M many protocol. It's more lightweighted and we migrate one MNE disk and allows remote visiting, remote accessing. We can still use other protocol, but um, there's the risk of overhead. For example, the MNE protocol have to be changed to SDC protocol and transported to target side as the SDRC protocol will have to be analysis and changed to SDRC and uh, MNE. So this overhead is pretty large and pretty consuming. So so we have PCRE SSD hardware and we can change from Starcy agreement to MNE protocol and in order to better serve the remote access from a better service for SDRC protocol we have MNE or fabric so this is the history MNE or fabric protocol is pretty young from 2016 onwards it's still evolving and now no matter it's kernel or SDK, kernel and SDK are two different solutions. And it's fully uh, interoperable. So this is the history of SPDK and EV of target timelines from July 2016 to 17. From March to July, we have functional hardening and we have done some kernel tests. And from November to uh, 17 to uh, November 18, we are solving the RDMA transport improvements. We are still doing it. And in January this year, um, we released the TCP transport support and from April this year onwards we are continue with our uh, improvement and optimization and first for MNU iFabric protocol standards has been renewed according to the spec and code and also in order to be more compatible with kernel, uh, we are improving and doing tests regarding interoperability and our performance. And based on SDK diagnosis, um, we need to better uh, improve the performance. And this page 
shows that this is the SDK MF host timeline or initiator development process and I won't go into great details here uh, it's similar to the target side and this is SDK manual fabrics target server code design and these are the details and these are the details that we used try to prove that based on SDK we can have the manual fabrics target the performance is guaranteed first is important the first point is important SPDK target side use the uh, customer MNE driver and, and the advantage is that um, the application if they want to visit the MNU SD then the writing and reading disks will have to go through the system scheduling and we have to go through the documentation system and for example the fast device and then we go to the uh, IO stack it's pretty lengthy and and we have to switch from have to switch the contacts between the clients or the customers and also for a kernel we have several lock in IO stack so there is a heavy competition regarding the resources so the performance is not very well and if we're using uh, the MBA to drive the whole process then we can solve this problem for example we can reduce the context switch or the times needed an IO stack will be reduced the number will be reduced greatly and uh, IO implementation uh, would be would not be bucked by a competition of resources and for on uh, client side if you create an IO QPR each QPR will have to be divided into commission queue and exhibition queue and for application thread can control itself and it can control the IO QPL that's created by itself and each thread are controlling the IO QPL created by itself and all the submission and completion will not have any problems regarding the resources they will not compete on resources and one of the precondition is that um, you will use the Linux UIO to drive it you can draw a memory map or VFIO it's okay it's doable and that's the first point and MNE are now verified by lots of the customers and it's being put in the production environment and being tested in the second it's not sufficient we need to provide other solutions we need to provide a framework for programming this is called SPDK encapsulated socket API and for MS target we have a group polling idea so um, in SDK target time on each CPU cord we have a new thread uh, there's one and only one thread that is running or operating on one specific task they will have a group polling function and this function is mainly focused on processing all the connections in the group and no matter it's um, what connections that's being referred from the transport if we accept this connection then we have will be rescheduled to one specific uh, CPU core for processing if we have, have only one um, CPU core then 
That means we have only one group. If we initiate this fabric target with multiple uh, CPU core, then each CPU core will have its own thread. Then if one connection is taken over by the calling group, then the polling group on each CPU will have to be operating an assigned connection, not other uh, connections that's handled elsewhere. So to a great extent, we will uh, minimize the competition for resources and how can we assign the connection on each polling group, then that will be determined by algorithm. Well, the current algorithm that we're using is sufficient and the third is deducted from the second point and one connection will be mapped to MVME, ME, uh, MVME IOQ and we guarantee by doing so the CPU uh, will operate and handle this uh, connection and there will be no competition for resources and the fourth point and many command handling in target side is processed by um, a different deployment layout and there is no lock so to a great extent we can improve its performance, especially for IOQ depth. So this is SDK MF target situation. This is the overall situation. And now let's see uh, SDK the transport is supported, and we can see that in SDK. For transport, we have a wrapper, and in MNU Fabrics protocol, we have a definition for transport. For example, we have Fabric Channel, RDMA, and GCP, and currently, the green part is already specifically decided on the um, protocol and it's jointly developed by NetCon and ProtoUp and we're still reviewing it. You can still see the progress on that. And the TCP transport in SDK we support two TCP realization. Currently we based on the kernel products and VEX processing VPP are two different categories. Why do we need to keep these two interfaces? The main reason is that SDK, the customer target is operating under a uh, customer specific environment, and if you're uh, calling on the kernel TCP, then you will have to occupy the service. Then the total target is that if a MNE command transported from an uh, initiator going through the networking card, then this MNE command, its handling will not involve kernel stack. If we have um, a TCP transport from the customers, then the TCP packet will directly be handled by PND. <coughs> For example, the polling mode driver and who will package the packages and transform and analyze the head of the packet and analyze focused on the uh, MNA command and transport it to the uh, customer stack and then give it back to the customer protocol and the PDK P, uh, PND data and the whole stack will guarantee that the customers can run through the whole process and 
the IO yellow copy will also be realized. Uh, if the IO is coming in through a network card, then we will sign it with a buffer, and the buffer will be used in the whole uh, implementation of the IO. Uh, implementation so this is an ideal status and the first we will support the TCP transport we have VPP uh, integration and also it's still in development process and VPP integration still have several issues to uh, handle if the VPP if the VPP um, customer protocol stack is transferred to other platform, it won't be that stable, so we need to fix a lot of bugs. And the standardization is still in progress and it's not an embeddable, embeddable library. It's not cannot be integrated with SD, SPDK. And we have two processes. One is the MF target process from SPDK, and the other is the VPP process. And if we have data coming in from VPP collecting all the packets and process by TCP and going through the memory process and share to the targets and vice versa. So the performance is not very good, not, not ideal. So we have a wrapped TCP interface, and the customers can use the SDK socket API wrapping to integrate with the other customers' stack. For example, Tencent's F stack. These are options on the plates. This is, uh, there are a lot of room for optimization uh, and operation. And here, for TCP transport and the service and performance scanning, it's pretty much like the previous slides. So uh, it's pretty much similar to the programming that we've talked about, the TCP transport performance optimization. Um, there are still a lot of rooms, uh, still a lot of issues that we can handle. And also, uh, SDK and uh, MF, we still using the polling group for all the socket management. We used the uh, EPO uh, connection and the for the first time. If we establish the connection, we will put it in the EPOC group and later we will monitor the socket, all of the data in event and in Vinix, we have the EPOVINX uh, system call and we will see what are the active connections and then these are uh, what we will do and the second is what we've mentioned for TCP connection optimization um, we're still using the SDK wrapping capacity integrate make the integration and second for all the offloading library that provided by the company for example Matt Ross we have a Marox message passing API. So it's a, also a socket interface, and we can directly offload the workload of CCP to its own network, network card, and there's a precondition of doing so. First, uh, while using it, we will use the LED preload to preload the library, uh, replacing the TCP socket from glips and second we will need support of hardware for both sides both parties and third uh, tcpp6 handling from uh, it's pretty simple so the spec has been determined and we have to check and all of these situations and finally for MNA TCP request lifecycle management uh, we use a situation stack and we can still realize it in order to guarantee that the performance and the cost balance we will save 
the memory space that we use, or uh, will also let us save the optimization resources consumed. And here are the details. For the PDO, re PDO receiving and find states, let's follow the spec. Yes, I have put the slides on the internet, you can check it yourself. And, uh, we will also post it on the WeChat. We have seen this. You can just then select the status. And you can see this. And request is. Life cycle from the time it receives many commands. And uh, you can undergo five states when it is allocated a new state. It's not uh, specific. You can go into any V driver and uh, after execution. If you want to allocate uh, some buffer, you will check whether it's a green or red. If it's a green command, after the buffer has been allocated, it can just be given to the NMVV buffer. But if it's red, if it's in capsule PDU, then after we receive the data from the remote uh, device, we can just uh, right into the right command. Uh, otherwise, we have to trigger the ready to RTD. And uh, when this receive initial data, they were give to the driver and then to execute. And, uh, and we will make this go to the initial stage. So this is the whole process. The red dotted line means error pass. And uh, it is uh, similar to the SDD case, SPD case. So this is helpful for you to read some codes. We have mentioned the performance. So we have a test the performance. It consists of uh, three machines. One is target. We have uh, 16 NMV disks. It can put it into one subsystem and then export it for the initial site, the initiator site. We can have the 1 to 16 connections, and uh, for two, it can have as, as much as uh, as many as 32 connections for this page. We can see the I.O. scaling performance. We divide the target side into four parts, and the initiator side, uh, they can send uh, 16 connections, so in total there are uh, 32 connections. For the left one, the QD is 1, and for the left one, right one, the QD is 32. So the line's latency. You can see increased IOPS. Also, from the third to fourth one, there is a decrease in the performance. There is the latency increase, decrease in the latency. So the CPU expansion, the connection dealing weights will also be reduced. Yes, the performance will also be will all be increased as a result in the initiator side. We can use the FIO plus plugin if 
we can increase the CPU core. You can see the increase in the performance. So the trend uh, is similar to the target site. This is similar to the kernel. And we can see the latency is about the test of the network performance. So for the backend storage, we use a non-block device. Actually, it can also be conducted in the kernel. And for the test, we have this uh, standard is that in system, on system side, we can see this kernel target. And we assign the kernel initiator for the target side. For the left side, suppose we all use the kernel initiator. And uh, for the target, uh, and uh, we use the kernel's target or SBDK's target. This is, you can see that uh, blue one use SBDK target. You can see that the latency is, uh, there's a very obvious decrease, about, like about 20 to 30 percent. So we use SBDK target. On the initiator side, we use the kernel initiator or the SBDK initiator. We can see the relative latency. And there is a decrease about 30 to 50 percent. So we merge these two graphs. We can see the two solutions. One is a pure kernel solution, target. Another is SBDK solution, target. We can see the latency. There is a very obvious decrease, like the shock decrease about 30%. And there's an increase in this uh, improvement in the latency. So this is using the kernel and uh, SDK, PDK. When we use the different numbers for connections to evaluate the performance, so the workload we use is about 4 KB random write. Yes, 70% uh, is reads, 30% uh, is writes. We can see that in the same hardware environment with the same CPU and the control, SBDK, the target uh, performance is the two point, uh, over 2.5 times that of the kernel. So this shows that under the same CPU configuration, the SBDK has fewer CPU resources, but it can complete the same task. So for HCI infrastructure, this is very good for the deployment of the environment because you can save the CPU space for more running of the virtualization machine and uh, for the vCPO. So this is Yes, this saves the cost a lot, but on the condition of the improvement of the performance. For the next page, there is an ongoing process. So apart from using the third party features, but also want to use some hardware feature like the Intel. The Next generation, 100 GB, Gbit, Nick. It can support the ADAQ. So it on the condition of high IOP, it can also still improve TR latency. For the third to second, uh, third line is about the details about the information, how to isolate the hard VAQ. Also, the Q need the support. This is some technical requirements, like the kernel driver, we need to build support the SOCT API. 
is acquisition. This is also exists in some new kernel, and to support this application, we need to use the epoch mechanism. And uh, we need to deal with Q with the same NVPR. So to tell whether the Q is uh, has the same NOVPI with other Q, we need to use the PS socket NVP and to just uh, input this option. So for the hardware, we also need some support to support the filtering to the shipment of the traffic to control the shipment and the traffic. And for the NIC's work, we are still tuning as Intel's new release of the NIC. Nick, I think these features will be integrated into SBDK's uh, software so that when they are using a NIC, we can enjoy these benefits. And uh, we have some further development plan as the software is open source and it's not very perfect. So we need to cooperate with the Linux kernel to have more interoperability with Linux to have this test. We need to continue to do this performance tuning and to integrate with third party, yes, to have deep integration. And also, we need to use the hardware features and to provide better offloading API. And to integrate with SPG and Smartly. So this is the conclusion. We have seen this APTK MF solutions, its histories. So we are focusing on introducing TCB transport, its realization, and some details. And they have given some performance test. We proved that SBDK's performance it is uh, good. So if they use SBDK solutions, then we don't need to upgrade kernel, and we can realize and enjoy this benefit. But if you want to use the latest the kernel MA. ETCP, then the, the stability version need to be upgraded to the 5.1. So in a last, welcome to take part in the SBDK community. So there's a different ways to participate, like uh, propose some questions and a bug. And uh, if you are very energetic, and if you want to S work on SBDK, you can offer some patch. Yes, that's the end of my presentation. And uh, yes, so uh, last thing, SBDK, on the WeChat, we have the community for the, to release some SDPDK's technical information. Yes, we were release a new SBDK and TCP transport uh, introduction and the have more details in it. So welcome to uh, welcome all of you to read these uh, articles on the WeChat and give us some feedback. Thank you. I have three questions. So you compare SBDK and, and uh, over TCP and the kernel's realization. But uh, for you, the TCP, it was the first conduct in kernel. Yes, we have mentioned it. Why we use SBDK is better than used in the kernel, because TCP it uh, for the analyze of the package. So I think the 
SBDK, why it has advantages is because SBDK programming framework. So the framework is about uh, synchronization, the parallel working mode. So under this programming condition, if you deal with the incoming MF uh, in SBDK, you have this dedicated CPU to deal with it. You can you it won't be switched between different CPUs use. So there's a knob, not a lock. Also, SBDK is main mainly uses the NMU driver. But for the users, they also still need to use the driver specifically for the kernel. But for the so the lock is too long, but for SPDK, SPDK's user's drive, driver is unlocked and uh, is uh, unsynchronized. So this performance determines that even they use the T kernel's P TCP, it still performs better than T kernel. So if we want to test the local NVE disk, under the same physical configuration, the SBTK's the kernel performance is better, is 10 times than that of the kernel. So I think this is a very good point to prove that the, the SBTK is better than that. We have tested the SBTK's plans. We think that uh, SBTK should be released, but uh, our test is uh, worse than yours. So we have this 140K. So this is to do with the environment. We have tested. Uh, it's more to do with the pressure test. You can go to the IO web of the SBDK, the Zine 19.0, the IMA based report. Our environment is the same as that one, so you can just refer to that environment. Yes, the parameters are same. You can just refer to that report. So I have another question I can ask you in private. Okay, thank you, everyone.